Whoa, what is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Second half is upon us, New York Giants fans, and we'll talk about it throughout this video. Talk about second half expectations. Before I get started on the video, just want to let everybody know tomorrow I'm going to be live with my two nice. He's going to come on the channel. I think he said 5.30. He might have said 6. I can't recall the exact time, but he's going to come on the channel. We're going to talk New York Giants football. We took last week off because of the bye. Always love doing that with Mike for about an hour and a half. Also, if you stick around at the end of the video, I don't want to really interfere too long with this video because I always like to jump right into the topic with you guys. But I want to talk about something uh, about my channel and about a, th a thought process I have about the direction that I may want to take my channel. And doesn't mean I'm still going to be talking tons of Giants. That's not changing. But it would be a, a, a pretty drastic change. And before I did something like this, whenever I have ideas and, and things like this that run through my head, because I am always constantly thinking about my channel, um, I always like to run it by you guys. Because at the end of the day, you're the people who will support my content. You're the people that watch my content. Um, and you're the people that I hope enjoy my content. So at the end of the video, stick around. I'd like to get your thoughts in the comments below with an idea that I have um, about the direction that I may take my channel. But again, I want to get your guys input. Like I said, I can't say thank you enough for all the support that you guys always show for me. Um, and I always want to run ideas by you. It's why I improved the mic. It's why I'm working on improving the camera. It's why I'm going to be getting a desk. Um, hopefully within a couple of months, have a, a really nice setup for you guys and for myself. I'm excited for it, but um, I want to run an idea by you guys. So stick around at the end of the video. But without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's jump into second half expectations for the New York Giants. But before we get into the second half, we got to talk about the first half. We got to talk about what this team was able to do in the first half because I think it's going to set me up for what my expectations may be in the second half for this New York Giants football team. The identity with this New York Giants football team in the first half, you could use several words. You could use resilient. You could use tough. You could use gritty. Um, there are so many other words that you could use. But regardless, I think the one thing that really stands out with this New York Giants football team is they won a ton of close football games. And they had a clear identity, which has been to chew up the clock. Right now, the New York Giants rank fifth in the National Football League in time of possession. Um, they ranked third over their last three games. And they've only gotten better at that. Even last week when they lost, obviously, to Seattle, I think by 14 points. But it was close until the end. Um, they won the time of possession, I think, by like nine minutes. And it's something that they've done week over week over week over week. And it's obvious as to why that they, you know, they do it. They're limited offensively. They realize that they don't have the best wide receivers. They try to keep their defense fresh. And that's how they won a lot of these games, these tight ball games. That's why every game has been tight. When you think about it as a Giants fan, and I'm not saying we should be, no, we shouldn't be. You could easily argue we could be two and six, like people told me on Twitter, but we could be eight. No, because we've kept ourselves in these games and we've given ourselves an opportunity to win them. And more often than not, in the first half, Daniel Jones and the offense has pulled through when we needed them to. The defense has gotten that stop at the end of the game when we've needed him to, which is why we have a 6-2 and two record. But when you really think about these games, the New York Giants in the final five minutes or you know, rounding maybe a bit. I can't remember last week how much time was actually on the clock. Maybe it was six and a half minutes. But right around the final five minutes every game this year, the New York Giants have had the ball and they've either been up or behind by one possession. So they've been in the game. They've had an opportunity to win it. You go back to the Dallas Cowboys game. David Sills falls down. Interception. Giants were down by a touchdown. We got severely outplayed in that game, but we had an opportunity in the end of that game. Last week, same thing. Obviously, the Richie James fumble. So that's what this team has been able to do in the first half of this season. They've been able to give themselves a chance to land a knockout blow. And unlike prior years, when they've had those chances, they've been able to get the knockout more often than not, whether it be due to luck, which you could certainly say, especially week one against Tennessee when they missed the field goal or several other factors, but they have found ways to win. The question now is, is this style of football sustainable over the course of the year? Right now, when you look at the plus minus throughout the NFL, the New York Giants have a plus six. When I say plus minus, in case you don't know, it's points for against points against. We've scored six more points than we've given up over our first eight contests in the game, which is not a lot for a team that is somehow four games over 500 at six and two. When you compare it to other teams around the league, the Jacksonville Jaguars, for example, who we beat, who are three and six, are plus 21, um, a, a plus 102 for the Bills at six and two, the same record as us. They have nearly 100 more points in terms of the point differential. 
And there's really nobody that matches what we've done in terms of the plus minus that has our record because we've been so good in these really close competitive football games. We have not won or lost by a lot. I, I don't I don't think, if I recall, we've had a two possession lead all year. Um, and the games in which we've won, we haven't turned over the football. I think you saw last week, we're not the type of team right now because of the deficiencies on our roster that can afford to have multiple turnovers in a football game and come out victorious. Um, regardless of who we're playing, that goes this week. That goes for the Texans this week as well. Giants have to play fundamentally sound if they expect to win these games. The other thing that you question of whether or not it's sustainable is the injuries. And somehow, some way, the New York Giants have overcome injuries week after week after week after week. And that speaks to the coaching staff. But again, can they continue that over the final nine games? Well, we're going to find out. Because now Xavier McKinney goes down with an injury, who is probably our worst injury we've had all year. Um, you could argue that he's probably the most important player in that defense. He's the Mike of the defense. He's what, he, probably the most versatile player on the defense. And that turns me to the X factors, I think, in the second half, if the New York Giants are going to continue to impress and if the New York Giants are going to go to the playoffs. Because I could have said that at the beginning of the video in one word. My expectations are playoffs. They are still playoffs. And I feel like a lot of fans kind of have been deflated due to the fact that we lost last week, uh, two weeks ago, I should say, before the bye. We've had, now had two weeks off. And, of course, now you have the Xavier McKinney news. So I think a lot of Giants fans, the, the air has come out of the balloon and they're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. And if you're a Giants fan, I can't blame you for feeling that way. After all, we've been through over the last five, you know, five six, seven, eight years, you're kind of always thinking that if something bad is going to happen, you know, something in the back of your head, you're always worried that something bad is going to happen. Now, I haven't felt that way so much this year with Brian Dable, but obviously you start to think about it. It always creeps into the back of your head, and I think a lot of Giants fans are just preparing themselves for what they feel is the inevitable and a second-half collapse. Those are not my expectations going in. Um, a lot of people after that Seattle game had the feeling that this New York Giants team got exposed. I don't feel that way. My feelings after that Seattle game was basically, it was almost a carbon copy for me of the Tennessee Titans game. On the road, short rest, not to mention we were pretty banged up going into that game. A harsh environment, a very loud crowd. The New York Giants committed a, you know, a decent amount of full start penalties due to the loud nature of that crowd. But it was the same spot we were in Tennessee. On the road, tough environment. Offense struggled throughout the majority of the game. We got the ball with about six minutes left. The difference was Richie James didn't fumble the football. <laughs> and Daniel Jones was able in that game to go down and tie the game. And then we went for two at the end of it and found a way to come out with a win. So I still feel like we had our identity. I still I still feel like in the second half, we had a 10-minute drive. We had a seven- or eight-minute drive. We couldn't get into the end zone. And I do understand that we definitely struggled in terms of running the football. But I believe in this coaching staff. And if you believe in this coaching staff, with two weeks to prepare coming out of the bye, if you don't think that Mike Kafka and Brian Dable are going to come up with some kind of adjustment offensively, I don't know what to tell you. Because I think they are. The question is, how much can they do with it, right? Because we are limited. We are limited offensively. Obviously, Evan Neal doesn't look like he's going to play this week. And the biggest X factor for me on the offensive end, before we get into the defense for the second half, is Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay has to step up. And I'm not telling you he's got to be Odell Beckham. But he needs to be a good wide receiver for this football team because if he's not, we don't have it. The way I look at Galladay and what I'm hoping is he is basically the New York Giants midseason acquisition. Of course, he really hasn't played for the Giants this year. And you could argue he hasn't played for the New York Giants since he's been here. Probably the worst contract in the NFL. But if he can come back and produce at a decent level over the second half of this season, it could go a long way towards Daniel Jones improving as a quarterback, towards Saquon Barkley being able to continue to have success on the ground if you have to worry about a threat on the outside between him, Darius Slayton, and hopefully the emergence of Wandell Robinson. So just the wide receivers in general, I mentioned Kenny Galladay specifically, but all three of those guys have to step up because they've who we that they're who we got. We need those guys to step up and at least be you know satis a satisfactory wide receiver group. But Kenny Galladay is going to be the one guy that I'm going to single out. Um, you've heard the coaches this week talk about how he's really putting in a lot of work at practice. Um, a lot of people pointed to that interview in which it seemed like Kenny Galladay was really starting to what they they felt at least was turning the corner, but the proof's in the pudding. We'll see if he can come up with, you know, do the job on the football field this week against the Houston Texans and in the, you know, over the course of the second half of the season. But I think he's a huge X factor. Um, and then on the defensive end, I think it's Julian Love, along with Dane Belton. 
who's going to get, you know, obviously an increased role with that safety group. But Julian Love now is going to be the Mike. He's going to have an increased role. They're going to ask him to do what McKinney was doing for this defense. And as good as Julian Love has played, it's going to be an added responsibility. So I think he's a huge X factor in the second half as well, along with Kayvon Thibodeau. From an optimistic standpoint, before we jump into the schedule of why I feel like this New York Giants team could potentially maintain their level of play, you have to think that they're going to get better, right? If you believe in this coaching staff, you've seen what they've been able to do with these players thus far. Over the course of the year, you have to assume, right? You go back to Pat Shermer's first year as a head coach with the Giants. They got better in the second half because they were getting adjusted to a new scheme. If you recall, we started one and seven. We finished four and four, could have easily finished seven and one. And maybe we'll have a second half collapse. I can't predict that. I'm not used to being six and two. Hell, I'm not used to ever being over 500 over the course of the season since our last playoff appearance. But I've always thought since the beginning of the year, this team is going to get better in the second half because we're getting acclimated to a new offensive defense at the beginning of the year. The question is, can these guys remain healthy? But, but the Giants coaching staff has been able to show you that they've been able to get out of get, get the most out of whatever they've been provided with. In terms of the second half schedule, it looks hard. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It looks difficult. But be honest with yourself. When you looked at the schedule at the beginning of the year and you saw the Packers and you saw the Titans and you saw the Ravens, you thought that looked hard too. It's why they play the games. It's why they play the games. Things can happen. Um, the NFL especially is such a week-to-week -week league. Teams could change overnight. You don't know what Philadelphia is going to look like in five weeks. Yeah, they look great right now. And they definitely look like they're going to be a really tough matchup for the New York Giants. And I'm certainly not picking us right now against them. But you don't know. You don't know what the Vikings are going to look like. Um, so that that's what I'll say about that. It's a week-to-week -week league. And I'm sure a lot of us, myself included, I had us 3-5 and five after the bye. I had us 5-5 five and five after that because I had us winning these next two games. But I had us 3-5 and five at the bye. Finishing 7-10, and 10, we're 6-2. and two. So things can happen. Teams could surprise. And hopefully Brian Dable has this team coming out at the bye, ready to go in the second half. In terms of the beginning of our schedule, when I look at it, these first two games are must-wins. They just are. Houston and Detroit are must-wins. They're both at home. You've had an extra week on the bye. You've had more time to prepare for these teams. Um, I understand that we're banged up, but these both these games are must-wins. And then after that, when you look at the remainder of the schedule, sure, we could easily get swept against the Eagles. Dallas is going to be really tough on Thanksgiving. you got to at least get a split against Washington. And I think that Colts game is looking like a game we should win at this point. They don't even know what the hell they're doing over there with Jeff Saturday and 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 uh, Ellinger, the quarterback. So I think 10 wins is still my expectations. And I understand that a lot of Giants fans, at least that's the vibe I get. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I misinterpret it. But I feel like a lot of Giants fans are falling off the boat. They feel like this team's going to fall apart in the second half. The other thing in terms of expectations for the second half, not even speaking about wins and losses, What's so important for me as a fan, and I think what's so important for Joe Shane, is to continue to evaluate these players because, as you know, we could we could project, and right now if I was going to project, Daniel Jones is coming back, Saquon Barkley is coming back, but things can change. We haven't even played a full half of the season yet. These guys need to continue to play at a pretty high level. They need to continue to stay healthy and grow in this offense over the second half of the season and give Joe Shane a reason or almost force his hand for him to bring these guys back. And listen, I want them to come back. I don't want to have to completely blow this up next year. Um, I would like to be able to build with some of the players that we have. Those two specifically, Andrew Thomas, obviously he'll be back. Julian Love, Xavier McKinney, all the players that Joe Shane mentioned. I want them to come back, but I want them to come back for the right deal. I want him to be smart in terms of the way that he structures the contracts, but I want them to come back. But their play is going to be indicative of whether or not they're going to remain on as New York Giants in 2023. My expectations are Barkley will be back, but he's got to produce. There's a lot of pressure still on Saquon. There's a lot of pressure still on Daniel Jones, and we'll see if they could deliver over the second half of the season. Kayvon Thibodeau is a guy I'm going to be really excited about to see the development. Wondell Robinson, Daniel Bellinger, whenever he gets back out on the football field, right? You want to see these young guys progress over the second half of the year. But I have faith in this coaching staff, and I do think because of the style of play, the New York Giants will – for the most part, there might be a game or two where we have a stinker, but for the most part are going to give themselves an opportunity late into the fourth quarter. Why shouldn't I feel that way right now as a New York Giants fan? I've now watched eight straight weeks before the bye 
when this team was still getting used to an offensive and defensive scheme, when they've had a crap ton of injuries. And I understand McKinney's hurt, but I heard the same things, obviously, when Kadarius Tony went down, when Kenny Galladay went down, uh, when Aaron Robinson went down. They found ways to win or at least compete and stay within these football games. I expect them to compete and stay within these football games. Whether or not they can maintain the 6-2 and two pace, we'll see. Because it's tough to win, uh, you know, very close games in the, in, in the NFL. But I think they will keep it close. I think they will come out with good, good game plans. They'll be well prepared. They'll be well coached. And I think this team will continue to compete over the course of the season. And in the end, my expectations in a one word in in in, in a one word sum up is playoffs. You look around the NFC right now. Four and five right now is the eight seed. That leads me to believe ten wins is a lock. Nine wins, I'd probably at least put us at fifty percent. Because if a team's four and five, that means they got to go five and three just to get to nine and eight. Washington and Atlanta right now are those two teams. I don't really see that. I, without looking at their schedule, I don't really see them doing any better than that. I think that's kind of their ceiling is nine wins. So if the Giants get the nine wins, they have a very good chance to make the playoffs. And that's still where I think we're headed. But a lot will be determined over these first two games. Houston and Detroit will set the tone. We win those games. I think it takes a lot of the pressure off the New York Giants. You go into your divisional games at eight and two. So the playoff hopes, I think, rest on these next two games. If they win them, yeah, regardless of how the team looks, I think we're going to the postseason. And I think you'll get very valuable experience for this football team, whether or not they get blown out or not. You know, I think back to Eli Manning's first postseason, I think it was against Carolina. They couldn't even get the ball across half midfield that game. They got blown out. But you saw just getting that experience for him and that football team, how they grew just two short years later and they, and they won a Super Bowl. So getting in the playoffs for a young core, trying to build a winning culture, could pay major dividends for this New York Giants football team in the future. And obviously, if we get there, we hope that we can win a couple of games. But my expectations for this team, I expect them to continue to compete. I expect them to continue to find ways to win close football games. I can't wait. I can't wait. I understand a lot of you guys are down in the dumps with a lot of things that have transpired. I'm excited because I do think this team is tough. I think they're resilient. And I think they're going to find a way to stay in these football games. And I'm going to the game. I should have said that at the top of the video. I'll mention it in the live stream tomorrow. I'm going to the game this week. So they better win. Uh, the last time I went to a game was against the Eagles last year. I think Hurts turned the ball over four or five times. And that was probably our signature win of the year. So I'm really looking forward to going to the game. So those are my second half expectations. I can't wait. Now I wanted to run the idea by you guys for my channel. Um, and it's something that's kind of always been circling in my head, in the back of my head. And I haven't talked it over yet with content creators. But basically, the thought process I have and something that I would like to do on my channel, I would like to do a daily show. Um, rather than doing videos, do a daily show where it's not just New York Giants specific. You will always have Giants content on the show. And I will have a producer, somebody that splits up the videos for me. So if you do not want to watch the live content, he splits it up into 8, 10, whatever, how long the segment is, clips that you could go and watch at your own leisure. So that's basically my, my thought process, and I almost want it to be like uh, a, not, not identical at all because I don't think it would be nearly as goofy. I wouldn't curse like he does, but si a similar vibe to a Pat McAfee show, but with New York sports driven. With obviously major, you know, topics around the league, like Jeff Saturday, for example, would be a topic to talk about. Or Kyrie Irving right now in the NBA. Stories like that. Um, but I would want it to be New York sports, not just football, basketball, baseball. And to have a two-hour, hour-and-a-half, two-hour show, four or five days a week, I don't know the exact. You know, I'd have to get everything situated in terms of the, 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 the window that I'd want to operate, the time, you know, whether it be a five to seven, a six to eight. It would have to be in the afternoon, and I would have to be able to get guys that I would actually pay to come on the show as reoccurring guests. But that's my long-term vision and probably my short-term vision, something that I would like to potentially do in the not-too-distant future if I could get things situated over the next couple of weeks. But I wanted to run that idea by you guys before I just completely change my channel on the fly because you guys are important to me. You know, you may not realize it because I, I don't always – you know, I, I, I have not been quite as active on this channel as I used to be because I have a job um, and, and, I'm, and I'm trying to get things sorted out in my life. This past off season, obviously, you guys know I had the weight loss and was going through some things off of YouTube. But I, I, I always think about the channel. I always try to think about ways to improve the channel. It's why I improved the mic. It's why I'm working on getting this camera working. Right now, we got the crappy camera up. 
And it's why I'm going to be getting a desk in the next couple of weeks to get you guys a better setting. But that's something I've always wanted to do. It's why the channel was originally called the Entertainer Talk in Sports. Um, because I envisioned it as being like a New York sports channel. A lot of people may not realize this if you're new to my channel. I actually started talking about the Knicks because the Giants were out of season. And the New York Giants fan base was so um, great. And I love you guys. And that's why I will always focus mainly on the Giants. Because you guys you guys were awesome. And you guys are my channel. Um but I would like to talk about other things as well. I'd like to do a Knicks element on a show. I'd like to talk some Mets. I'd like to talk some Yankees. I'd like to talk about New York sports in general, even if I may not be a fan of those teams. Hell, I'll talk about the Jets. Ugh. <laughs> but no, I wanted to run that idea by you guys because you guys are important to me and I want to produce content that you guys want to watch. And like I said, you know, and that's why I wanted to do it in a video because I realize a lot of my subscribers are not lot not all you guys watch my live streams. A lot of you guys prefer my video content. Um, it will not. I will do it live, but it will it will also be spliced up into video format if if live is not what you prefer. So let me know in the comments below if that's something that you guys would enjoy. Um, I'm just trying to find ways to grow the channel and come out with better content for you guys. But I just wanted to run that idea by you because I've been thinking about it the last couple of weeks. As always, guys, if you like what you watch, please subscribe, drop a comment. Maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.